Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Hairbrain Games. Today we're going to take a look at a fun little thriller filler called Kingswood. This is a one to four player game. It's uh, basically effectively the premise of that the king has issued a challenge to the guilds of the forest, uh, or the village anyway, get rid of the surrounding forest of monsters. So, without further ado, let's get to the game. Okay. Let's take a look at what's in Kingswood. Okay. First off, we have the main board. This is where you're going to keep score. Around this board, you are going to have six locations. Uh, one of them is a special location. There are eight special locations in the game. You choose one of them. The other five are going to be standard locations you can expect to play with every game. The Tavern, the Market, the Blacksmith, the Academy, and the Forest. You have a selection and variety of creatures with which you will do battle. There's Chapter 1 and Chapter 2. Chapter 1 monsters are not so mighty. Chapter 2 is more mighty. You also have a selection of tokens. You have money, which comes and goes. You have uh, these other resources. You have hearts. You have books, magic books. And you have swords. Those do not come and go. They are exhausted and refreshed instead. Each player is going to get a guild and this guild will tell you what the starting resources are and a special ability in this case we're going to play a two-player game uh, where we have these two guilds with their special abilities and we will just get rolling one other exception you will note is that the adventurers that you can manipulate and you're not taking on any specific one you're taking on any one you find advantageous are going to be placed at three locations at the start of the game the Knight's Guard will come in later. He's mostly meant to block and annoy you. All right, with that, let's get to a gameplay example. We're going to begin with our Silver Shield. The first thing you do on your turn is you may take the action of any adventurer where they are right then and there. So you can start off by taking the action wherever you land. Now here you have, I can pay a coin to refresh all my books, pay a coin to refresh or to gain an additional magic book, spell book, etc. Same here, same thing. Instead of refreshing books, you're refreshing swords. And here, this is my favorite, you can gain three coins. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to gain three coins. That gives me lots. Now I can move. I can move adjacent for free to any non-occupied location. So, I'm going to I'm going to go here. I'm going to move to the tavern for free. Now, I can now take the action at the destination as well. I can choose to pay a coin to refresh all my hearts of which are all my hearts are currently refreshed. How heartening. And then I can gain a coin or take or spend a coin to gain a heart. I'm going to do that. Now I have two coins available to me for use during my attempts to compete against these monsters, all of which require different resources to be either exhausted or expended in order to be defeated. And that's that. The final action is if the guard is off the table, you place him where you started. So there we go. And that's the end of one player's turn. The next player, as well, can look and decide to do the same actions. With three coins and swords, we do have an opportunity to take on one of those creatures, so we're going to go ahead. We don't need to refresh this, or we're just going to skip this. We're going to move our adventurer to the forest. In the forest, you can fight any number of these revealed monsters. So I will look, and I will go, I take one coin, and I exhaust one sword. Look at that. That was sort of cool. I then grab the Moon Sprite, reveal and add an extra monster to the forest. Ooh. All right, so we're going to keep that there. We get one fame point, so we're going to go ahead and go from zero to one fame point. And we're going to reveal and add an extra monster to the forest. So we're done. I'm not gonna, I don't have anything else. You can fight numerous monsters here. Normally you don't reveal these any additional monsters until you've till the end of your turn so you're only going to be facing whatever three monsters you started with in this case the moon sprite has well it's got a twin brother called moon sprite all right we're done so we're going to go ahead and do that oh, wow serious moon sprites all right now with that done we know that we have to move from there 
to there. And there we go. That's it. You are really already on a roll, and this is pretty much the bulk of the game. You're going to play this game. You're going to take your turns. You're going to defeat monsters all the way until one person gets 20 points. They can flip it over, and and uh, after that, everyone who everyone gets an equal amount of turns. Once that's done, whoever has the most points wins. Some of these cards are interesting. You'll you'll uh, like this one. You can just basically beat the toll troll by paying the toll. Three, and he gets two coins. Other cards will add uh, fame at the end of the game based on other cards you've got, etc., uh, etc. Et That's really it. These special cards do things like this one for free. You can refresh a book, and you can look at the top monster card. And if you can defeat it, you do get defeated. So uh, lots of little, little touches here for what is a generally simple game. But let's get into my final thoughts on Kingswood. Okay, final thoughts on Kingswood. This game is simple. Let's go over the cons, although it's really not a con so much as it's just a public service announcement. This is a very simple game. There's a target audience for this. It's people who likes who like simple games and are delighted by them, um, or people that don't mind playing them, uh, knowing that there's simplicity. There's no subtlety to be discovered here. It's at its heart a pattern matching game for points. Um, it has my least favorite kind of combat, which is, do you have these icons? Then you defeat the monster. Uh, that said, it is what it is. It's simple. It does exactly what it describes, and let's get to the pros. Now, for the pros, for the low price point, this sucker's sturdy. It's got some great pieces. It's got, like, really oversized adventurers. It's got fixed, sturdy location cards. Um, I, I like that, and I'm, I'm glad that they took the extra mile to put that into a, what is really a budget game. Uh, the double bonus is cool of where wherever you are when you start, you can take that bonus. Wherever you are where you land, you can take that bonus. And so that's kind of cool. You get to you get to kind of feel like there's a double bonus going on that you can mix and match. I like the difference between the coins expending and the tokens that you possess and just exhaust. There's something, even something small like that is is valuable for like coins. Of course, you're trading back and forth, but you know, I have to turn in this this sword icon and this sword token and this sword token. And then instead, like, I use these sword tokens and I have to refresh them, but I still have them. And that gives you that feeling of growing stronger, even though it's utterly irrelevant which icons match which. It's all based on what cards are randomly shuffled up. But there's still that feeling of, like, I've got four swords and I've got two hearts and I've got two magic books. And now when I go attack monsters, I feel more powerful. It's little things like that that really, that really advance it. The creature defeats are nice when you defeat a creature. There's certain bonuses that kind of boost out there that I think are nice. They're great for a filler game. It makes it so it's not just rote, uh, simple, deterministic path for you. You do have a little bit of variety, enough for a simple game like this to make it feel compelling. So in summary, the oddity of Kingswood is that I literally just reviewed a game very similar to it. Uh, which had a lot of reduction of complexity and a lot of just taking in things that we've seen before and doing them. And I kind of read it the Riot Act a bit for, for not being noteworthy. So why on earth could, would I not levy the same complaint about this game? Why don't I? Well, I thought about this. I did. I, I promise you. And, and I think that what's done here, what's done well here is done really approachably well here such that I can see it being endearing to a much larger audience. I don't have to teach this. The premise itself helps, like running around the forest, attacking monsters with cute, clever, cute art. One to four. I like that. It's got kind of a near and far artwork kind of thing going on, which I thought was a nice touch. I like the nice, simple decisions. It's like a miniature Istanbul. You're going to these places. You don't even have to read that much text. You kind of know what you're doing. You get this nice, simple, joyous adventure affair going on. And even though it's simple and it's dumbed down and I've, it, I've, I've seen everything in it before in other games, there's something about this that's going to be, that's going to make, let me facilitate bringing it to more groups and more people and enjoying it as well as having them enjoy it too. So there's just something about it where they streamlined it in the right places without just making it the same as everything we've seen before. Um, I, you know, I, the, the nice simple decisions, which I've already touched on, yeah, it's a pleasant romp. Uh, it, it's it's not a soul scratcher. You're you're literally the only aggressor. <laughs> you, the players, are the only aggressor in the game. The monsters don't attack you. Like you go attack them. It's kind of like you're the bad guy, but they don't really let that one on. It's like everyone else just wants to drive their little bumper car in circles, but not you. You want to run them into the barriers. That's that's your job. So. 
Um, I, and finally, I definitely like the determinism in planning what to do, and that's probably the biggest thing. There's very little random or unexpected. You have choices. You have things you can aim toward. Uh, and you have more authority to your game planning decisions, not just digits in the dike trying to figure it out. And so for its price point, if you want something simple or you think your group would benefit from having a game that's kind of just a lighthearted 20-minute romp in, in fantasy land uh, where you get to be the bad guy, but they don't really call you that, yeah, Kingswood, give it a try. I, I'm, I think it's a keeper, and I will, I will try it with kids and fun-loving fun folk alike. So thanks again, and we'll see you next time on Hairbrain Games. Hello everyone and welcome to yet another game.